The one thing I realized about building a personal style that feels like you is that, well, it's a habit. And just like any other habit that you want to build or break, you have to A, want to, and B, you gotta work on it. Just like some muscles that you would go to build in a gym, you gotta put the reps in. And just like at the gym, I wanted those gains quick, or whatever the gym bro lingo is. And I thought the shortcut to putting in that time and effort was by going shopping. I used to think that I could just buy my way into having good styles, so I would scroll on Instagram, Pinterest, and buy all the infinity scarves and floppy hats I could get my hands on. Don't judge me. And if you've been watching this channel at all, you'll know that all I ever ended up with in the end was a closet full of clothes with nothing to wear and a whole lot more wasted money. And the best part about all of it was that I still didn't really have a good sense of my style. It wasn't until I started actually spending time in my wardrobe that I was able to hone in on my personal style with a lot more clarity. And when I shifted spending all that time from shopping to some of these habits that I'm gonna to talk to you about in today's video, not only did it help me find my personal style, but it also allowed me to experiment and evolve with the style that I found in the first place. So in today's video, I wanna share with you those 10 habits that improved my personal style. And this video is sponsored by Lily Silk, but I'll talk about them more a little later on. The first habit that was a complete game changer in helping me find and improve upon the personal style that I was trying to build was getting dressed for nothing. As in getting dressed every day regardless of whether or not I had somewhere special to go. I used to look at getting dressed in one of two ways. One, I would only get dressed up for a special occasion, like a date night, going to a party, things like that. And two, I used to use going to work as a reason to put effort into how I looked and my style, but after a while I just stopped caring and started going into work feeling and looking like a potato. But I still had a ton of clothing in my closet that I just wasn't really using and I couldn't find a good opportunity to use them. That was until I decided to just start getting dressed. For no reason, even if I was gonna stay home all day and edit YouTube videos, if I wasn't gonna go anywhere, or if the only time I actually left the house was to take out the garbage. I was determined to start getting dressed. Not only did I start feeling a lot better about myself, but I felt more productive in my work, and I was starting to find out what it was I liked and what I didn't like. And I think this habit would also be really helpful, especially if you work from home or work remotely. It's really easy to get into a rut of just wearing leggings or sweatpants at home all day, because let's be real, that's what's most comfortable. But I think even if you do this a few days a week, not only will I think you'll feel really good about yourself, but you'll start to really find out what it is you like and what you gravitate towards in your own wardrobe. And that way you can really discover and build upon your own style. Habit number two was waiting before I bought something. If you guys have been watching this channel, then you know I was a full-blown shopaholic and I would give in to any and all of my buying impulses. And with that, it left me with a whole bunch of clothes that I wasn't using, wasn't wearing, a whole lot of buyer's remorse, and a whole lot of debt and wasted money. I spent many years trying to rewire my brain when it came to my impulse buying. And not only has this immensely helped my wallet and my personal finances, but it's really helped me with my personal style. By just taking a breath and slowing down that impulse buying, I was able to dodge a lot of potential buyer's remorse items and prevented myself from buying things that I didn't truly need. And if you do struggle with impulse buying, my favorite two things to do is one, put the item on a wish list, and two, give yourself at least 24 hours to cool off and think about it. Usually when I allow myself to sleep on something, I've completely forgotten about it by the next morning, and when I do go back to my wish list, probably to add something else that I'm trying not to impulse buy, I'll forget that I even wanted that thing to begin with. So putting things on a wish list and giving yourself a cooling off period, you can make it 24 hours, a week, a month, whatever you think works for you. If you set that boundary, I think not only will it save you a ton of money, but it can really help streamline your shopping and help you stick to curating that personal style that you envision. Habit number three, I've only been starting to pay attention to this year, and that is incorporating texture. My wardrobe is pretty boring, I would say, and I love it that way. I wear the same basic three or four outfits 
pretty much on repeat. So the way that I like to change it up is by playing around with my textures. So I love incorporating things like leather, metallics, and even things like cashmere and silk. But it is through paying attention to textures and materials that I'm able to create a little bit of a different look while still sticking true to the basic outfit foundation that I know I feel most comfortable in. Which brings me into today's sponsor, Lily Silk. So Lily Silk did send me a couple of pieces. So to demonstrate my point about mixing and matching and playing around with textures, I'll show you a couple of outfits and how I do that with their pieces. So this first outfit is very me and this is something that you would see me in pretty much on an everyday basis. But if I want to change it up a little bit, I can do one of two things. I can throw on this silk tank top and now all of a sudden the look feels a little bit softer and can really easily transform this outfit from day to night just by changing one piece. But if I want to keep the t-shirt, I could switch to these silk trousers. They're really flowy, really comfortable and cool and I think it gives a completely different vibe but still really chic and elevated. So this is what I mean by playing around with different textures. It can really transform your look without straying too far out from your comfort zone if you do like to stick to a certain outfit formula. And if you are interested in any of the pieces from Lily Silk, I will leave them all linked down below for you. In my opinion, they are very high quality. I've been sleeping on their pillowcases for like two years. They're still going strong. I use their eye mask, their scrunchies, and I really like that they're paying attention to the sustainability factor when it comes to their garments. So they use 100% mulberry silk and they do make efforts to keep the products clean and toxin free with their Ecotech certification. And Lily Silk is making efforts to become zero waste in their production. So any leftover fabric from their clothing, they will repurpose into things like scrunchies, the pillowcases, their eye masks. And they're now also working with TerraCycle to enhance their recycling initiatives. And I just like the feeling and the breathability of silk on my skin. Plus they just add a little bit more interest to your look. So if you're interested in checking out Lily Silk, I will leave everything linked down below. Habit number four was learning to pay attention to my footwear. Do you ever spend time like putting together an outfit, you're loving it, you're vibing, it feels so good, and then you throw on a pair of shoes and wonder why all of a sudden that look is just completely off. I'm learning over time that the choice of footwear can really make or break an outfit. And usually when my outfit feels off, it's because I picked the wrong shoe. I think the best way to do this is to just show you. And for me, the shoe choice is very much built off of the bottoms that I'm choosing. So if you'll see here, I'm wearing just a straight leg, pair of denim that's sort of cropped, that sort of ends at the ankle. You can see here, I've chosen a super chunky sneaker. I even would have worn this maybe a couple of years ago, but if I switch it out with either a ballet flat, a more sleek loafer, or just a more streamlined and leaner sneaker, you can see that it really changes how the outfit looks and it changes the weight of the outfit. When I'm wearing that super chunky sneaker here, I think it cuts me off weird at the ankle, it truncates my leg, and I think it makes me look a lot shorter than I actually am. Whereas if I choose a sleeker and daintier shoe, it really sort of continues the line of sight of my leg, it makes my legs look longer, and it just looks sleeker and cleaner in my opinion. But where I think a chunky sneaker would look great is with this pair of wide leg high rise trousers. And I think it's because the trousers, not only do they elongate my legs to begin with, but they go all the way down to the ground. They don't cut off at my ankles. So you can kind of get away with having a chunkier shoe, but where it doesn't necessarily work for me is throwing on a shoe or a flat with a rounder toe. I think this again, truncates my leg. It sort of halts that sight line. Um, and it just makes the outfit feel a little bit off. So what I would replace this shoe with is something with maybe a little bit more of a pointed toe. And what that does is continues the line of sight and even brings it past the bottom of my ankle. So it makes my legs look a mile long. If you find that your outfit is feeling off and maybe a little less stylish than you wanna feel, try playing around with your shoe choice and see how it changes that outfit. Number five is experimenting with proportion and balance in an outfit. Now, when it comes to this, you know, for me personally, I don't really subscribe to 
you know, those like body type rules and dressing for a certain body type. I think that really boxes us in when it comes to playing around with fashion and just experimenting. Anybody deserves to try and play around with any style they want. You can wear it whatever you want all the rules at the end of the day. But I'm noticing that I was starting to feel a lot more confident in some of my outfits and just being like, oh, you look good today, girl. When I paid attention to balance and proportions in my outfit. So for example, I love me a oversized blazer and I love that oversized trouser that goes with it. But since I'm going oversized with the blazer on top, and oversized with the trouser on the bottom. I don't necessarily want to reach for one of my favorite oversized t-shirts too. Now, I mean, that can be a look in itself and sometimes I completely would wear this, but I think with this, you can also run the risk of just being swallowed in fabric. And so with this look, for example, I would switch out the oversized t-shirt for a slim fitting tank top or even a bodysuit. But I do like how switching out those two elements creates a completely different outfit and creates a completely different silhouette. When I switch out the t-shirt for the tank top, you can see that I have a body, you can see that I have a waist and it just creates a different element. Or for example, I'm wearing this slim fitting tank top with my tighter 501 jeans. This to me looks completely fine and I would definitely wear this on its own, but where I would bring a little bit more balance and interest into it is by throwing on this oversized button up. To me, it just makes it a little bit more interesting and more of an outfit than just this straight up and down tank top and jeans. So by experimenting with balance and just playing around with it, trying it, see what sticks, see what fits, I've been able to discover new things that I like to wear in my style and it just adds a little bit more things for me to play with when I am shopping my own closet. Habit number six is taking care of myself. By this, I mean just taking the time to do my best to take care of myself. So this is things like, you know, making sure I take off all my makeup at the end of the night, no matter how tired I am, doing my skincare, taking some time to style and do my hair. Even things like getting enough sleep, it means the next day I'm feeling energized and refreshed to have like the mental capacity to even decide to want to get dressed and choose an outfit and spend the time doing that. So giving back to yourself and practicing self-care and whatever that means to you can still translate into personal style and how you present yourself later. Because if you're feeling good about yourself and feeling confident, anything you choose to wear, I think is gonna look good on you and I think you'll feel good in it. Habit number seven is allowing myself to store pieces instead of decluttering them. I definitely have fallen into the trap of decluttering something because I thought I should get rid of it and then ending up buying it or thinking about buying it later on. It just creates a cycle of waste, wasted money, and it's not great for the environment. Even though I always sell my pieces and try to give them a new home and a new life with somebody else, who knows what ends up happening to it later. So if you're feeling on the fence about something, there is no pressure to get rid of it right away. Give yourself permission to store it and revisit it at another time. I have a ton of videos on my channel all about decluttering and letting go now, and I hope a lot more of a balanced and gentle kind of way. But if you're just not ready to let go of something and you're not quite sure yet, then don't give it any more energy than it deserves. Store it away and revisit it later. Or you can challenge yourself to style it. I have a whole video all about that right here. Number eight is leaning into accessories. I love a good pair of gold hoops. I literally never take these off. I love a necklace stack. I love a ring stack, but things like belts, purses, hair accessories. There's so many things that you can play around with that can really transform an otherwise basic and simple look. Even red lipstick or doing a bold eye, that really communicates something different depending on what you're going for. And accessories can even become part of your signature style. Like I wear these hoops every single day. I always have this necklace stack on. For me, that's part of the outfit. And if I decide to change things up, then it's gonna change up the look and how I normally present myself. So don't be afraid to play around with your accessories to change up your style and communicate a different vibe. Number nine is outfit repeating. I think once you find an outfit combination that you love, hold on to it and never let it go. And within outfit repeating, if you do tend to get bored with that, then that's where you can incorporate things like playing around with balance and textures and accessories to create different outfits that still mimic that base foundation that you know you like. And that way it can really prevent you from getting bored and feeling too repetitive in your style. Don't be afraid to repeat an outfit. If it's good, it's good. 
And number 10 is more related to shopping, but it's knowing how I'm gonna pay for it. Even if it's a splurge, I gotta know where that money is coming from. And how is this related to personal style, you may ask? Well, if you are looking to add something new to your wardrobe, you want it to be something that is joyful, not anything that you regret, and not anything that adds more stress and more burden into your life. And I'm not just talking about the space that it's gonna take up and how you're gonna take care of it, but when you get that credit card bill at the end of the month and you have no idea how you're gonna pay for it, it's just the worst feeling and it just saps your energy. You don't want that kind of stress in your life. Fashion is meant to be something fun and joyful. If there's something you want to add into your wardrobe, keep it that by not going into debt for it and by knowing exactly how you're going to pay for it. So those are the 10 habits that help me find my personal style and improve upon it. Dedicating some time and creating these small habits has really helped me just feel better about my clothes, better about my wardrobe, and even better about any future purchase I decide to make. Because in implementing these habits, you learn so much about yourself in the process. You learn what it is you like, what you don't like. You even learn to not compromise on those things. I think it helps really cultivate a sense of confidence in your own wardrobe, in your own style, and even in your own self. So let me know if there's any habits that you've implemented that have helped you find your style or allow it to evolve. Leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, I would so appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. It is a great way that you can help support this channel and help my video reach other people. And if you like this video and wanna see more, then please subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.